Yo guys, subscribe to Mad Math. Okay, hi everyone. I hope you enjoyed that power footage. That guy was really cool. So I'm gonna link his Instagram in the description. Please go check it out. Um, anyway, let's get into the video. So today we're gonna be looking at the square root of n plus square root of n plus square root of n plus dot 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 dot. And we're gonna prove that this limit exists as well as finding the limit. And we're gonna do this using real analysis, using the power of regex. So we have this, and this is quite hard to understand intuitively when it's just written out like this. So it'll be better for us to define a recurrence relation. Okay, so what do we need for a recurrence relation? We need the first thing. All right, so I'm just gonna define A1 to be the square root of N. And you could define A1 to be differently, it'd actually still work. You just might have to prove that the sequence is bounded below or the sequence is monotonic decreasing. Um, but we'll get into that in a minute, so don't worry about that. So then we're gonna define A k plus one to be the square root of n plus a k. Okay, because from the picture, we have this thing, and then we add n and the square root, then we have this thing, and we add n and the square root, and we have this thing, and then we add n the square root. Okay, does that make sense? And then, what are our goals? We want to find the possible limit of this. And then we want to prove that the sequence is bounded above, and it's monotonic increasing. Okay, so first of all, why do we actually need to prove that this limit exists? Why can't we just assume it has a limit and then wipe it out? Well, for example, if we have this sequence, I'm going to call it C for crazy. Um, oh, no, let's call it. Let's call it W for wrong. Okay, we have 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1, dot, 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 it's minus. And this goes on further. And if we assume this has some finite limit, right, and we work with it just like our normal, our normal numbers, which is, is what we could do if the limit was to exist, then you know, we can say that w is 0, it's a half, it's 1, it's minus 1, it's whatever. Okay? Get some tissue. Alright, so we need to prove that this limit generally exists. But first of all, our first goal, let's just find a possible limit. Right, well, that limit is going to come out when k goes to infinity. Okay, when we get very, very, very far along our sequence. So when k goes to infinity, a k is going to go to the limit, the possible limit. And the same with, sorry, a k plus 1 is going to go to L and so is a k. This is a nice equation for the square of sides, so we get L squared equals n plus L. And then rearrange, you get L squared minus L minus n equals 0. Um, just put that to your quadratic formula, and you get L equals um, a half of 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 4n. However, if you look at this here, um, and if you look at our recurrence relation, we take something positive and then we add in and then take the square root, which is defined to be positive, and we keep on doing that. So our possible limit is going to be positive. Okay, so you can just whoosh, whoosh, get rid of that negative solution. And this is our possible limit. Okay, well, how do we prove that this is the real limit? Okay, so we need to do two things, two goals. We want to prove that the sequence is bounded above. And we want to prove that the sequence is monotonic increasing. Okay? Now we can do it the other way around. You could prove that this sequence, well, if it was for some different sequence, okay, and if it was to prove that it was bounded below and it was decreasing, then it would also converge. Okay? So this is the theorem of convergence. All right, so then say we have a1 here, which is the square root of n, and then say we have a2, a3, a4 could equal a3, because monotonic increasing, so the previous term has to be less than or equal to um, the next term. And then here's a5, blah, blah, blah. And say we're going to bound it here. Okay, this is our bounding line. We're saying that every time the sequence is less than or equal to this bounding line. Well, then we know it converges. Okay, it might not converge to this bounding line, but it will converge to some limit. Okay. However, in this particular problem, it's quite neat to bound it above by the limit. We could have bounded it above by something greater than the limit, we could bound it by you know, 20, 20 times L plus a million, um, and that would work. However, it's neat to bound it by the limit. So I'm just going to write that down. We're going to bound it above by L, the possible limit. Right, so this is going to be L, and we're going to bound it. Okay, it's just going to get closer and closer and closer to L. Right, so how do we bound it? We want to prove that every time the sequence is less than or equal to L. So first time, A1, this is equal to the square root of N. Well, L is a half, I'm just going to distribute this half. So we have a half, sorry, L equals a half, plus a half times square root of 1 plus 4N. Well, 
I mean, you just get rid of the half, so this is definitely greater than or equal to half times square root of 1 plus 4n. And then I'm going to get rid of that 1 inside the square root, so this is equal, sorry, this is, again, greater than or equal to um, this half times the square root of 4n, which is equal to square root n. Okay? Goes a bit messy, falls off the end now, but that's the idea. So for the first case, we're proving that. Okay? And now, by induction, we want to assume that ak is less than the limit, and if ak is less than the limit, then ak plus 1 is also less than the limit, and that's going to show that it's bound above. So, write that down, and write that in red. So, assume ak is less than or equal to the limit, okay, and then consider ak plus 1. Okay, so ak plus 1 is equal to, well it's going to be the square root of n plus ak. Well we said ak is less than or equal to this limit. Okay, so this is going to be less than or equal to the square root of n plus, what, what was the limit? The limit was, we're just going to, again, going to distribute the half. A half plus a half, which we're going to make this longer, times the square root of 1 plus 4n. Okay, so this is what ak plus 1 is less than or equal to, using, here, using our assumption. Right, and we want to show that this is less than or equal to the limit. Okay, well, we have a square root of an entire thing, so it might be useful to consider what the limit squared actually is. So, consider l squared. So, l squared is equal to, well, it's a quarter, just squaring this first bit. And then I have, um, and then I have 1 plus, this times this times 2, is 2 times square root of 1 plus 4n. And then just squaring the last part, I have plus 1 plus 4n. Okay? Um, and then, just collect terms, so I have a quarter uh, plus a quarter, so that's going to be half, so this is equal to a half. And then a quarter times 2 is going to be um, a half times square root of 1 plus 4n. And then I have a quarter times 4n, which is just going to be n. Okay, so I have n here. Well, if we compare this to what we have inside the square root, we see that what we have inside the square root is exactly the same as l squared. Right, so we replace whatever we have in the square root with l squared. So, a k plus 1. Is less than or equal to, by our assumption, the square root of L squared, which is the modulus of L. However, L is positive, so this is just L. So, through induction, this is true, the first term is less than or equal to L, and if a k is less than or equal to L, then a k plus 1 is less than or equal to L. So, that is done. Okay, I'm just going to rub this off to make some more room. Doing little squats. Now I want to prove that the sequence is monotonic increasing. This means the next term is greater than or equal to the previous term. So, um, the next term, so we have, we want to prove this. We're required, required to prove that ak is less than or equal to ak plus 1. What is ak plus 1? This is equal to the square root of n plus ak. Okay. This is equivalent to, and we're not um, we're not assuming this is true. They're just showing that this is equivalent to because both sides are positive. This is equivalent to ak squared is less than or equal to n plus ak, which means which is equivalent to again, not assuming because if we were to assume this is true, then well then this is a false proof minus ak minus n. To zero. If you look at this quadratic here, you see that it's the same as the quadratic that we had earlier, which means the roots are going to be the same. Okay, so let's draw the graph of it. So remember we had a half of 1 minus square root of 1 plus 4n. So that's not very clear, but this root doesn't really matter, that's here. And then here we have l. Okay, we want to consider when this graph is less than or equal to zero. Okay? Well, 
Here are our IAKs, and this is the, so the x-axis represents IAKs. And we know that IAKs are greater than or equal to zero, but I don't, well, tri trivially we know that. So it's definitely, we're definitely considering from here onwards. And by the previous part, we know that all our AKs are less than L, okay? So we're also here, we're also only considering this part. So we're just considering this part of the AK axis, okay? So from here, we see that if we look down the graph, we see that this is true. AK squared minus AK minus N is always less than or equal to zero because our AKs are always less than or equal to L. So by the previous part, AK is always less than or equal to AK plus one. Do that in black as well. So we've proven this one as well. Okay, so we're bounded above, and in fact we're bounded by the limit, because it's quite neat in this case, and we showed that it's monotonic increasing. So, by the theorem of convergence, the possible limit is the true limit. And we've proved that rigorously. And this is a really cool result. Um, it's really neat. If you plug in n equals 1 here, you get the golden ratio. And I'm going to include an animation of that now. Okay, so here's a graph for n equals 1. Plugging that into our formula, we get the limit is half times 1 plus square root of 5, also known as the golden ratio. And if we look at our graph here, we see that the AK is beautifully converged to our limit, which is about 1.618. Okay, so that's everything. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. That was some real analysis, and yeah, I'll see you next time.